Mr. Speaker, it, it is now three years since the flood of 2011. Dauphin River, one of the badly affected communities, is one of the most beautiful spots in all of our province. And of course, one of the places most severely affected in the flood. Today, more than 95% of the community residents remain evacuated. I asked the Premier, can he tell us when all the residents of Dauphin River will be able to go home and live in their community? No, he can't. I thank the member for this question. This is uh, one of the ongoing issues of the 2011 flood. And the member will know that in our last quarterly report, we set aside $100 million to rebuild the communities impacted in the 2011 flood in partnership with the federal government. And the Minister of Aboriginal and Northern Affairs has been working on that with his federal counterpart. The difference is this time, we want to build those communities up in such a way that they're not going to be subject to the kind of flooding we saw in 2011. This means putting people on higher land, and we're making land available. This means rebuilding houses and infrastructure, water and sewer facilities, street facilities. This means addressing it in such a way that we have the kind of long-term solution that we've provided to the people of Winnipeg with the floodway, the people of southern Manitoba with the work we've done on ring dikes around their communities and lifting their homes two feet above the 97 levels, the kind of work we're doing in Brandon and along the Assiniboine Valley. We need a solution that goes beyond the existing disaster financial assistance assistance arrangements, which only allow you to rebuild to what you had before. Well, if what you had before is consistently flooding, that's not good enough, Mr. Speaker. So we have to take an approach that lifts the boats, that lifts the possibilities for a safe, secure life for all of those communities, which is why we put that $100 billion aside. The First Minister's time has expired. Mr. Speaker, three years of waiting and still no clue as to when people in Dauphin River can finally go home. Mr. Speaker, the economic and social costs of this NDP government's reactionary flood remediation, especially at this glacial pace, are adding up. Much of the reserve land around the community of Dauphin River is low and marshy and boggy at times and can't be built upon. The people of Dauphin River need a cost-effective long-term solution. I asked the Premier. What is his plan to ensure that the entire community of Dauphin River has a sufficient land base on Nothing. high enough ground that the oh. community can expand and grow? I appreciate the question from the member because he's identified that these communities were settled on land which is at high risk of exposure and floods when the original portage diversion was built. There was no provision put in place when the original portage diversion was built to protect these communities. We happen to uh, have land contiguous to that existing community, and we are going to make higher land available to those communities. Land selections have been, uh, are occurring. The community is identifying higher land that they can put their homes on and build their community on in the area where they've lived for uh, many, many years, Mr. Speaker. So we are working very closely with them to do that. It will require rebuilding infrastructure. It will require rebuilding new homes. We're working closely with the First Nation, the federal government, the local municipality that's impacted. We know that this land will have to be redesignated as uh, uh, reserve land under the federal legislation. But, Mr. Speaker, I can assure you and I can assure the member from River Heights we're moving forward on this in lockstep with the community to ensure that we have a solution that is a durable solution and won't put them underwater the next time we have an event like 2011, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Harold Anderson, a Dauphin River councillor, and his brother John are here in the gallery today. They know only too well that the road to Dauphin River, Highway 513, was built so low that it floods. It's been a perennial problem. It's a gravel road because the NDP government has never made a priority to pave it. Because the road floods, people in Dauphin River have too often been cut off and isolated. I asked the Premier, will he bring in engineers to see if it's possible to build a paved road on high enough land that it will not flood, allowing the community permanent, year-round, safe access. Mr. Speaker, the member is correct. That road was at risk and did uh, go underwater during the 2011 experience. And if the community wants to make that one of their priority investments, 
and rebuilding their community, we can consider that with them in partnership with the federal government. We want to ensure that we have a solution that will be a durable solution for that community. That can include transportation. It can include core infrastructure like sewer and water. It certainly will include new housing that will be built on that land. And on higher land, we will make Crown land available so that community has a durable long-term solution that does not put them underwater. It's taking far too long for any of us. We're all frustrated by the long period of time that this has taken. Uh, we appreciate the community's tremendous patience and leadership in identifying how they want to make their community one that will be high and dry in the future and a community where people can live with the same kind of security that the rest of Manitobans enjoy. That is what we're going to do. We're going to treat those people for the first time in history like every other Manitoban and give them the kind of flood protection they so much deserve, Mr. Speaker.